Howdy, howdy, you beautiful peoples. Today, I'm going to be showing you my personal recommendations for the Overwatch settings and a general rundown on what they do and a general rundown on my recommendations for both uh, individual programs, say your mouse settings, and for Windows and your overall graphics settings. So hopefully you can get the most out of your system and enjoy Overwatch to the fullest extent and potential that it has to offer. Without further ado, let's get into it. So what we're going to go ahead and start out with is our Windows settings options. So in here, we're going to go ahead and type in mouse. You're going to look for your mouse settings option here. Once in here, here in the top right, you're going to click additional mouse options. This window shall come up. Double click speed, anything here on the first page. This is all preference and what you like. We're only here for the pointer options. Now this motion section, you want to make sure this is right in the middle. The best way to do it. There's 11 tabs here. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. That is your middle option. You want to make sure it's there. Make sure you apply the enhance pointer precision option. You want to take this option and you want to unselect it. And you also want to apply that as well. We are now done in here. The next option that we have is if your mouse comes with a specific software that you're able to download and have for it, as mine does, which for me is Logitech. You want to go through and you want to download it and you want to go ahead and pull that up. Once you pull up your software, you can go in and select your device that should come up. Now we have plenty of options, but what we're after is making sure that we are on the DPI that we're looking to use and that we're comfortable with. And you want to look through your mouse. You might have to look up online how to find it if you have any trouble, if your mouse supports it which is looking for either report rate or your pulling rate. You want to set this option as high as you can. This is going to be how often your mouse is updating and telling the computer how often where it is and the position that it is. This is phenomenal for really, really fast movements and making sure that it stays accurate. That is all we have to do in here. One more option that we have to also try to look to increase the performance of our game is if we type in power and then we find our power and sleep settings when going in here. And then on the right hand side, we will click additional power settings. It will pull this window up. You want to make sure that you select the high performance option. Now you might have to click show additional plans and select it from in here. You want to select it. You want to select apply if there's an option for it. And then you should be good in here. Now our graphics settings, making sure that we're on the right refresh rate. For me, I have an NVIDIA GPU, so I'm going to be using the NVIDIA software. The final Windows aspect option of this, because there's two things that we will need to do, should work for AMD as well if you are having any issues on setting your refresh rate. So we're going to right click our background here and pull up our control panel for NVIDIA. Once we pull this option up, we're going to be able to go through and we want to find change resolution and we want to go through if we have one monitor or multiple we want to set it to the resolution that we want to be at and we want to set our refresh rate as high as it goes when we set this we're going to go ahead and click apply this will go ahead and flash it'll update your screen and it'll ask if you want to keep those options make sure to click yes one option that we also have that might be to be available to some of you is g-sync so if we head on in here we can enable or disable G-Sync. So if you are compatible and you choose to use G-Sync, this is going to be extremely smooth feeling on your game, but it is going to introduce some input delay. When we go over the graphic settings later, we're going to decide whether or not we should enable a V-Sync. The only time that we should enable it is if this option specifically is enabled for our monitor. You want both of them or you want neither of them. And we are, uh, we're done in here. For our final windows option we're going to go through and we're going to type in display we're going to be looking for the change the resolution of the display option it might show up here it might show up lower down you might have to type in more but when you want to pull this up down here we want to scroll all the way down our options and we want to select advanced display settings select this make sure you select the monitor that you're wanting to set or all of them individually and make sure that your refresh rate in this option is also set to the highest that it goes for the monitors that you are trying to set. And then we are done in here. 
So now we're going to do our Overwatch 2 settings in game. You're going to go over to your menu. You're going to go over to your options. And inside of here, you're going to have the first set of your video options. In here, you have your display mode. I'm going to personally recommend full screen. This is going to give you the absolute best performance. It might be a little bit inconvenient having to alt tab out or use any other option to try to get out and in, in between your different programs as such. But this is going to give you the best performance. Here's your field of view. I recommend turning this all the way up as high as it can possibly go. This is going to allow you to see significantly more. It's going to constrain you in and focus you in more on a lower uh, field of view. Going to your aspect ratio, this is just going to be relative to your monitor and what you prefer. The dynamic render scale, this is going to dynamically change your resolution that you're playing at. So if you've ever seen a YouTube video with a 1920 by 1080, it's going to essentially be lowering that resolution and raising that resolution to meet your target FPS. So if we were to turn this on, it would give us this new option, which is our desired frame rate. It is going to do everything it can to put us at this frame rate, which is going to include changing our resolution. So it is up to you on whether or not you want to see that difference. So certain moments may be a little bit more less accurate and a little bit more blurry than the others because it's going to have to upscale those images. So this is completely up to you. Your render scale. This is something that you can go ahead and, and set as well. This is going to, at 100%, render at your native resolution that your monitor and stuff is set at. For me, it is 1920 by 1080. Maybe for you, it is 4K. If I wanted to play the game in 4K, I would raise this option all the way up to 200%. At 150, it is going to put me at 1440p because this is the resolution that it's rendering at. Frame rate, in here you can do either automatic or custom. I personally prefer custom. I have a 240 hertz monitor and it is set to that for my refresh rate. I personally am gonna be doing 238 because the FPS can spike above the maximum amount and that can cause screen tearing because I am not using things like the G-Sync that we had mentioned earlier I'm going to personally be going under, but if we are using our G-Sync option, we can go ahead and just put this on automatic because we're going to be enabling B-Sync if, if we have G-Sync enabled only in that case. Otherwise, we want this off. The triple buffering, don't worry about this. We just want this off. It is just going to give us more input lag. Reduce buffering, we always want this on. Sometimes you might have to refresh it in your game if you're having issues. So it is worth at least noting that for the future. NVIDIA Reflex, I highly recommend this. If you have the option to be able to do this and your graphics card supports it, go through and enable it or enable plus boost, whatever is specifically unlocked for you to use. It just depends on your graphics card and what it is capable of and what series it is. I will post down below the link to the NVIDIA website, which will tell you exactly what to use. In here, we have our gamma correction, contrast, and brightness. These are options that are all preference that you can go through and essentially play with. Now we have our HDR options. This is only specifically for those who have HDR on their monitors. You can turn this on and this will give you richer colors, darker darks, brighter brights, and just far more contrast. Absolutely rich colors, but this completely depends on your display and whether or not you also have it enabled inside of your graphics settings. Head on over to our graphics quality options. In here, we're going to be able to really tune our game, both how it performs, looks, and overall feels for all of our graphics needs. It might be extremely easy to go over and set these options to low, but I highly recommend going through and setting them individually to your own liking. So we're going to go ahead and start with our high quality upsampling. This is going to give us two options, default and AMD. FSR 1.0. As you notice, that image sharpening option disappears when we turn it to default. Default can be equated to being off in this case. So with this option on, it is going to render our game at a lower resolution, and it is going to upscale that resolution to the resolution that we want to be at. This could possibly give us better FPS, but make the game look visually worse and blurrier we might miss details that we otherwise might have had. So the image sharpening option for this is going to be sharpening that image up and 
trying to eliminate the blurriness that you get with upscaling that image. I personally recommend having this off, but it is completely up to you to go through and try out these different options and see what works. Now, next we have is our texture quality. This is going to be the resolution of all of the textures that we have in our game. So whether it be the floor, the resolution of the payload or the walls, this is going to be the quality of those textures. We're going to get a lot of different options in here. This is also going to be a low performance impact option that we have. This is completely up to you to test. Next, we're going to have our texture filtering quality. This is going to be the quality of the textures in the distance. So if you imagine Minecraft having its chunks, you can change how many chunks render in, which is how far you can see. This is similar in that case being the textures that we can see in the distance and the detail of them. This is going to be a low performance impact option, and this is going to allow us to see things better in the distance. So just try this out, see if you can notice it or not, and see how you perform with it. Our next option is going to be the local fog detail. This is a high performance option with multiple options available. I highly recommend putting this to low. With this option, it is going to be essentially like the sunbeams and sun rays like you would have previously when Temple of Anubis was in the game or any of the maps that have them present or any smoke or anything that you would possibly have on any of the maps as you can tell with the fog. Now, next we're going to have dynamic resolutions. Easiest way to think about this is like a mirror or any reflective object. This is going to essentially enable or disable and change how reflective those objects are and the textures that are there. This is going to be like if RTX was in the game without actually being RTX, this is going to be a high performance impact option. I recommend turning this off. Next, we're going to have our shadow details. This is going to either be dynamic or baked shadows. With this option completely off, with all the options that we have, it is going to turn off the shadows for all of our characters and objects. Any shadows that you see will be baked into the map and into the textures. I highly recommend putting this to at least lower medium if you want to have this lower because this is a high performance impact option. And so that way you can still get the benefit of having the shadows. Say somebody's coming around a corner, you can see their shadow. That'll give you that kind of advantage. Now, we have our model detail. This is going to be both the details, the polys of the map object. With this option, we get multiple options. This is a high performance impacting option. I highly recommend going through and just playing around with this and seeing what works for you and what you are comfortable with. This is going to be both what you see in first person and third person, so your teammates and the enemies and the detail of the characters. But the caveat to this is going to be the local client sided objects and map objects that you can interact with, those physics based objects like the basketball that you can hit and goes flying. Those things that are client sided, you're going to see more of them and those are going to have more of an impact. As I said, it's a high performance impact option. I highly recommend just trying this out and finding what works out best for you. Next, we're going to go over the effects details. This option is going to encompass lighting from our weapons, from our abilities, the amount of particles, colors, and effects that you see. This can be extremely visually distracting. And we have a lot of options for these. I highly just recommend putting this to low. And this is also a high performance impacting option. This is going to give you a better experience just putting it on low and you're still going to get that a beautiful visual look. So I highly recommend just putting it here. Next, we're going to go over the lighting quality. This is going to be the quality of the baked lighting on the map textures and the overall map lighting. So the dynamic lighting and everything as well. This is our low performance impacting option. So this is personally just a preference option. Personally, I put this to low. You can go ahead and choose what you put this on yourself. Now we have our anti-aliasing quality. This is going to be blurring the pixels between objects. And this will essentially look to smooth any jagged edges that we have. Personally, I put this to low, but not off because it still at least smooths things over. At extremely high options, you can find that this can make things look a little bit too smooth and a little bit too molded together. So if you're finding you have that option where things aren't distinct enough, go ahead and play around with this 
and see what you think. This is a medium performance impacting option, so it is up to you to judge on what works for you. Refraction quality. This is going to be the texture quality and the detail of the bump maps on the textures and objects. So the texture of like wood and how the light will interact with the bumps and the feel of it. This will essentially change that bump map on whether it's really, really detailed in there or whether or not it's smooth and essentially gone. This is going to be a low performance impacting option. So it is free to you to judge on where you go ahead and put that option. Our screenshot quality option. This is purely going to be just the quality of our screenshots at 1x is going to just give us an image and anything higher. It is going to give us a lot bigger of a file and a, a BMP file. So this is something I just would leave at 1x and at higher qualities, it can also change or remove UI elements. With ambient occlusion, this is going to be the shadow on the edges of objects. And this will look to add more detail and essentially more realism to the objects. This is going to be a high performance option. So I recommend personally just turning this off or to a lower setting. It's completely up to you on where you put this and how you feel. Local reflections. This is going to be the texture that's baked onto the objects with reflections and the detail of them. So you can completely turn this off, which will eliminate that or on the different options that you have. With the damage effects, the final option, this is going to be essentially just removing blood particles or if you want them on. And finally, we have our details tab. And here we have our performance stats and our system information. In here, you will have to individually enable them and turn it on entirely and you will have to apply those options in order for you to see. This is where you can get your frame rate counter and you can also enable different things like your GPU temperature and your VRAM usage network latency and your interpolation delay. So some final options that we can go ahead and look at if we come over to our sound, this is completely preference options. None of these are really gonna make much of a difference aside from our spatial audio, which can essentially change the depth and feel of the audio. This is something to try out if you are interested in it. And then our audio mix, this is going to change how some sounds will uh, appear and be footsteps. Certain things might be boosted, say on the television option, whereas they might be dimmed on the other option because of how sound would be displayed through those individual objects. Now, if we go over to gameplay, there is one crucial final option that we have which is our miscellaneous. We want to make sure enable high precision mouse input is enabled. Put this on on if it is on off. This is going to be the raw input from your mouse or your mouse program that is going straight into the game. This is going to give you the fastest feel because it is going to sync up with the pulling rate of your mouse with the option that we set and made sure was set earlier. Now, you can always do your accessibility if you're struggling with anything like the camera shake from say Ferris shooting you or any abilities like junk rat 100% make sure you come in here you can turn the camera shake and you can reduce it which is lower than the default option subtitles this is purely a preference option the menu movement is and the HUD shake these generally are going to be say if you're jumping and you notice that your HUD bounces with you and has that effect, you can now disable that in Overwatch 2. Your color blindness options, these are completely preference as this is an accessibility option. So go ahead and set this to your heart's content. Thank you beautiful people for watching. Please leave a like, subscribe, and let me know what you thought down below. I hope this helped you. I also do stream. Uh, I try to be a little bit more consistent, so feel free to follow me over on Twitch and join the Discord server. Uh, I'm open to all feedback and suggestions, so thank you all, and have a fantastic day. Adios.